Hi everybody, I'm Dweezil Zappa, and welcome to another episode of Guitar Power. Today, we have Elliot Easton from The Cars. Elliot, thanks for joining us. In honor of your dad, hi boys and girls. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> now, I wanna just jump right into your guitar playing. Now, I think you have crafted some of the, the coolest solos with great tones. Everything always works for the song. Thank you. So let's go like right from the beginning, how you, you came right. to, to play the guitar. Well, I was born in 53. In 56, I was three years old and I saw Elvis on TV. Immediately after that, I brought a comb and a glass of water to my mom and I had to comb my hair in like a spit curl and yeah. just mug it in front of the mirror as a little kid. So the image of like a guy playing a guitar has always been like, embedded in my mind. I've always loved the guitar. I didn't get serious trying to play it till I was nine or ten, but I, I had one like all those years and had an ear. I could get a melody out of a plastic ukulele and all they all go, what? So I felt like a precocious little kid, you know, because I could actually get some music out of these toys. So you had an ear for it, you were interested in it, yeah. but how did you go about playing it first? Because you're left-handed, so, so were there a lot of manufacturers making left-handed instruments? There might have been, but I didn't have one. Yeah. Uh, and until I was 12 or 13, I just played like a guitar like that, flipped over with the strings backwards. You played it with the top string, like the high E? Yeah, was, just like yeah. I played, just a, yeah. I just had a right-handed guitar, but yeah. I held it this way. Yeah. And then I found that there were certain chords that were impossible to play, and it was limiting. Yeah. You know, like you couldn't play like certain bar things and stuff backwards, upside down. Yeah. It, it, it just doesn't work with your yeah. physiognomy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I took the guitar to the local mom and pop music store and had them turn the strings around and file the nut slots and you know make it so it yeah. would be a left-handed guitar. And that was like kind of like, oh, yeah. you know, I was like, I was killing myself playing yeah. the guitar backwards. <laughs> and since then, since like about 13, I've always just played you know, mirror image, just a, yeah. le a lefty guitar. But did you find it hard to learn things from a right-handed guitar player just because visually it was also kind of backwards? No, in fact, yeah. I'm looking at the same plane. You know, you're down here, I'm yeah. down here. And it's just, it's like a mirror image. Yeah. And I mostly learned by ear, playing along with records and moving the needle back and back and back. So you're listening to records, you're picking out one note, two notes, three notes at a time. Just but chipping away. You crafted these sounds that are, are timeless, uh, that work so well for the songs. Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of that comes from growing up listening to Top 40 radio in the 60s, mm -hmm. where the solos were short and concise and they were part of the song. Like George Harrison and people, you know, or, yeah. or the studio guys even, whatever. I, I love that sort of like 16 bar solo thing where you, you make a statement and you get in and you get out. And for me, it was always like a little mini composition within the song. Yeah. And my brief was to kind of take off where the lead vocal ended, find some way of in, usually quoting the melody in some way, and then try to figure out some kind of semi-graceful way of setting it back down again so the yeah. vocals can come in. One of my all-time favorite solos, maybe you could take us through it, uh, okay. on, on Shake It Up. Yes. Now, now that one, when I heard that for the first time, I loved that you had a couple of different tones in it. Yeah. And you had almost a call and response thing, but it was just you playing. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, the first half of the solo was like a clean Fender Telecaster sound yeah. into a deluxe like I'm yeah. playing today. And then halfway through it, I plugged in a Gibson guitar and cranked it up and cranked the deluxe up all the way and did a wailing kind of solo. Yeah. And so it would sound like, a, like almost like a different character. Let's see if you can recreate some of those parts I'll do for my us. best. I haven't yeah. played it in years, but um, something like... That's the first half. That little bit of the, the picking that is uh, sort yeah. of like palm muted. Then you come in with the ripping tone, right? Uh, and and you have these these bends. It's rock, but it has a, almost a country flair to it as well. Well, here's the thing about me too: is that unlike a lot of rock guys, I play through the changes. It, like in that second half, it's like um, you know we were in C, so it's like that's C. And then it goes down to A minor. 
to B flat. And so I'm in B flat. And then C again. Then A minor again. So oh, the, third, the third lick on C, slow that down and, and let me see what's going on with that band. Because it sounds like a, a, like a slide or pedal steel kind yeah. of. Okay, you can make it your own. Yeah. You well, add that's, your own thing to it. The the finesse of how you do that. That's what I like about your solos is that they're crafted in such a way that when you play through that Fender and you have a little bit of that delay and the whole thing, it's like it sounds like it's your personality. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about the cars is there was nothing sort of like you know pre-planned or or or, or, or premeditated. It's just the sound of the five of us, what we sounded like playing in a room together. I remember we went away to England to make that first record. We did it at Air Studios in London, mm -hmm. which is George Martin's studio. And we were having so much fun making the record that I remember having a conversation with Rick and Ben and the guys just saying, geez, I hope it sells enough so we could just make another one, yeah. so we could just do this again. Because yeah. we had this great rented house in the Mayfair in London. Yeah. and we're, going to Air Studios and Paul McCartney's next door. And I was like, this is great. And you got to work with uh, Roy Thomas Roy, Baker. and Roy had just, you know, was hot off Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. at the time. And so he came and saw us play on a snowy night in Worcester, Massachusetts. About eight people were at this student gym. We didn't think he would like, like it because there was nobody there. And, yeah. you know, you, you want to play great and have a crowd going crazy at a time yeah. like that when you're trying to impress somebody. Right. But we just played our set and he said, no, you got, we love it. It's great, and we're already signed at that point. We're looking for a producer, and uh, Roy just, without hesitation, said, "Let's go away to England and make this record." And man, that was just so fun. So but the drum fun. sound, the vocal sound, all that stuff yeah. is is killer. Well, you know, you you were commenting, Dweezil, about the tones, and yeah. I have a little philosophy about that. Whenever I'm trying to come up with a cool guitar part or try to find something that fits the song, it could be a solo or an intro or a hook, I never pick up a guitar or a pedal or an amp till I have some sound in my head that I'm trying to go for. Yeah. Because otherwise I would be like going from guitar to guitar. Rabbit hole. Diddling mm. around all day. But if you have a concept in your head, you go right to the, the right guitar, to the right effects, to the right amp, and it's just there because you've already heard it. So what I would do with the cars is, you know, we usually get to solos towards the end of a record. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried all kinds of different ways, different approaches. Sing the solo into a tape recorder without mm -hmm. a guitar and then figure out what I just sang. Make up a line and then make up a harmony to it. Then throw away the original line and just play the harmony. Yeah. All kinds of like things just to kind of break break out of, of normalcy and try to come up with something unique and melodic and that made sense to the song that, that complemented the song in some way. But I think you succeeded in that because when you listen to those guitar parts, the way they interlock with the keyboards, and then your solos, they all have a different approach. You know, like what's the solo that has the chromatic line in it that, oh, that sounds like bye it bye just love. yeah, it just comes out of nowhere, and people are like, "What's that?" Oh, it goes. <laughs> So even like when you get to the end of that, the raking of the pick yeah. across the strings, like that's the kind of detail that I love. It's like you, you could have played that without the rake, but yeah. with the rake is where more exciting. Yeah, well, that's a you know it's a blues move. It's not like that's what should be on that song yeah. necessarily, you know. And that's kind of what made our band unique. Instead of being like five guys who all went to the same high school and mm -hmm. had the same record collection. We were guys from all over the country that met in Boston, which is that type of a town where people come. Yeah. So, you know, all very different. And um, I was telling you before we started this interview that there, yeah. there were, there's a quote from uh, one of your dad's oh, albums yeah, yeah. On, on, on a, in one of my solos. Uh, it happens to be the solo from You're All I've Got Tonight from the first album. I got the lick from Sugarcane Harris on Hot Rats. Basically romping on B. So the solos.
it's so great. It's so Isn't great. That funny? And I totally now, I, you know, I totally hear every little bit. And when I was coming about. over, and I knew I was going to yeah. see you, and I thought, I wonder if you ever picked up on that because I know you like. I, I know it now. I know it now. Yeah. 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 That's great. Isn't that funny. Elliot, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad that we got a chance to talk about music and guitars and Me all too. these things. So am I. Thank so. you very much. <laughs> so thanks, boys and girls.